Hello and welcome to another Getting Started video. This time I will show you the Grains module. The Grains module is a fairly new module in the A modular series. It is modeled after the UREC module Grains by Ginkgo Synthes. Our Jan Willem from the Netherlands um, invented that. And it is basically a programmable module that is running on an Arduino Nano chip. So here you can see the grains module in my UREC. It's between the weather drones on the right and the CV pair on the left. And the original grains module had three knobs and four input channels. So here you can see the original UREC grains module and the A modular grains module side by side. So you can see that the A modular module is uh, much smaller, even though the grains was already a very small module. And in this view of the grains module, uh, in comparison to the A modular module, you can see that the original had a um, Arduino Nano uh, stuck onto the PCB, and the A modular does not have that. It actually has that Arduino chip straight on the board. Just going through the uh, controls of this, out of the box, you have four input channels, uh, in one, in two, in three, and an audio input. Now the audio input did not exist on the UREC module. This is an invention or an addition that Robert from Tangible Waves put in. That means that you can put an audio signal in and maybe process it in some way. You also have the outputs for the bus CV, bus control and bus gate. So if you have a firmware that uh, accepts a frequency control, then you can use the bus CV uh, so you can drive that from MIDI. On the output side, you have a audio output and you have a digital output. The other pins are just multiples. On the controls, you have three potentiometers, P1, P2, and P3. And the first two you can switch to be either manual or to also be offset by what is incoming in, in uh, incoming channels one and two. So if you switch that to in one, then whatever comes into here will be offset by that. And the same for P2. P3 is completely independent from number three. What you can also see here, and that is a very nice addition, is the USB port at the front of the module. Here you just plug the cable in and install the new firmware. It is actually fairly easy, and I will show you in a minute how to do that. So when you order the grains from the Tangible Waves web shop, it's unclear what firmware you're getting. The firmware that was installed on mine was the Talco, which is a robotic voice that just counts upwards. Okay, so here is just a quick example of the Talco firmware, which is basically a robot voice that counts from one to however high. It sounds like this. Turning the uh, knob number one resets the counter. Turning the P3 knob changes the pitch of the voice. 11, 12. So all the way to the left is very low. And all the way to the right is uh, very high pitched. So let's turn it into the middle somewhere. And the lower button changes the speed in which um, the voice speaks the numbers. So. P, er, P1, er, P2, er, P3, er, P4, 
And the rhythm in which uh, it counts is determined by an LFO. So here I have just a trigger out from an LFO. So I can change the speed in which it's counting uh, with this external LFO, which goes into slot number three. 70, so that was the uh, Tarko firmware from of the grains. So I just did the video about the uh, demo of the Tarko firmware, and now I want to add a different firmware. So I put in the USB cable and when I'm following it all the way back to my computer, so it's going here into this port. And on the computer, I have um, downloaded a couple of the firmwares. So you PWM, Grains, Wave Grains, the Talco and the TriShape. So now I just want to install the Euro PWM saw. So just go into that folder. I open the Arduino IDE. So this is now the Arduino IDE. Just checking in tools that uh, the board is Arduino Nano. The processor is at mega 328P. Port, for me it's uh, COM6. It could be different for you. If you do get board info, you should get something like this. Unknown board is okay, but at least it does un, uh, find something. And that means that you can upload a sketch. So uploading a firmware is really simple. You just click the upload button, which will compile the sketch, as you can see down here. And then it says done uploading. Now, once it's done uploading, I can basically unplug the USB cable and uh, try that sketch. Now I have here the, the PWM saw firmware installed on my grains. And uh, that is now totally different to the Talco. So all the inputs and outputs in the potentiometers work differently. So this is uh, just an oscillator, basically. So let's listen to it. All the knobs are turned all the way to the left. And what I can do is I can change the pitch, which is on number knob number three. And then I can change the spread of the saw wave. It's nice. And knob number two adds noise. So this is basically that firmware. You can also use the CV control from the bus CV into number three to control the pitch. So let's do that. So I have my MIDI keyboard connected and I can now 
drive the pitch by just um, pressing down keys on my MIDI keyboard. That's the Euro PWM saw. So now I have installed the TriShape firmware. Now this is a very interesting oscillator and I'll just read what's written in the sketch for that. The tr this is a triangle based oscillator with a mixture of phase distortion and hard sync in the phase domain followed by asymmetrical wave wrapping in the amplitude domain. Knob number one and the input number one applies a mixture of hard sync and phase distortion to the basic triangle wave. The knob number two and the input number two amplifies the base triangle wave. Then, once it hits the limits of the range, folds it back into the opposite direction. With enough amplification, this will happen again on th at the other side, creating a rich spectrum. This amplification is asymmetrical, which maintains more of the low end of the spectrum. And uh, knob number three and the modifier number three, that is the bass pitch. So the way I've patched it here is that I use the um, bus CV to put into mod number three. So basically that will give that oscillator the pitch and I can control it that with my MIDI keyboard. And I put in channel number three in, mod, in modulator two. I change this knob to into so this is changing the ampli amplification and the distortion. And the way I'm doing this is that this is actually coming from my slew module. So I'm getting a slew every time uh, the slew receives a gate. It creates a kind of an envelope and uh, changes that um, ampli amplification and distortion. I also put the signal into my WASP filter and the WASP filter goes into mixer channel 1 and the WASP filter is uh, fairly low so nothing gets through until an envelope opens it up and that envelope is also triggered by the bus gate. So on every key press uh, that key will trigger an envelope to open up the filter and will also trigger the slew to change the distortion on the grains. Uh, try shape firmware. Let's see how, what that sounds like. So you could hear that um, first the filter has to open up slowly and then uh, you will also hear the phase distortion coming from the slew. wiggle the key, I can actually get a little bit of vibrato in there manually. Well, that's the tri-shape firmware. Yeah, there are a few things that you can do with it. As I said, using an envelope, using a slew. Modulation options are many in the A-modular system. 
Uh, you could also use an LFO to create some kind of a vibrato that happens all the time. And um, the possibilities are almost endless. Um, yeah, that's the try shape. So this uh, patch is a little bit more elaborate. And here I am showing the firmware called Wave Coins. So Wavegrains is another really nice firmware that uh, you can upload into Grains using the USB and the Arduino IDE, as I've uh, shown before. And the way this works is that you can select different wave tables with knob number two, and you can scan through one wave table and another using knob number one. So I'm not sure if that's the year one before that or the one after or what these two wave tables are. But fact is that if you turn this knob or if you switch that button for manual to in one, then you can use an LFO to scan through that and, and give that a little bit of movement, which is really nice. So here in this patch, I have the frequency control, which is number uh, channel number three, attached to the bus CV control, so I can create, um, control the pitch from my MIDI keyboard. And I have the input one coming from an LFO over here, which is really slowly uh, giving it a triangle wave and uh, scanning through the wave table. And even though you get an input CV here, you can still control how much that affects the signal using this knob. The output of the grains goes straight into my channel number one on my mixer. Um, and then again, I take the second output into my SV filter and the output of that goes into channel number two. The SV filter has another control of the cutoff frequency by another LFO. Again, that's using a triangle wave and slowly changes the cutoff frequency for the filter to give that a little bit of movement. And everything goes through the multi FX where I have the reverb number one and quite a high value for the wet signal. And this is how that sounds like. First, the dry. Uh, grains without the filter. Now adding the filter to signal. This was just an example patch of what you can do with the um, wave grains firmware on the grains using a few of the other modules. And again, LFOs are always good for movement and you cannot have enough LFOs or envelopes for the matter.